How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Boosted Fit Games podcast. Welcome to another episode today, episode three. We got we got some nice stuff lined up for you guys, but also our first ever guest. What's up, Johnny? Say hello. What's up? Let's get boosted, man. I'm ready. Yeah, man. Let's get boosted with that Fit Games. Yeah. All right. So we're going to start off, uh, I think, actually, uh, I, don't quote me on that, but I think every podcast st- starts like this. Basically, just introducing ourselves and uh, and just saying what's uh, what what we have been playing and yeah. maybe maybe actually you know with a twist, what kind of a uh, what kind of uh, workouts have you been doing if you've been doing any uh, lately? Cool. So go. Sure. Uh, so my name is Johnny. I'm a software engineer by profession for eight years now, and my my main passion hobby is. Uh, streaming, creating videos, creating music as well. Yeah, um, it's kind of the thing that uh, that really excites me. And uh, so I have a channel, Johnny Plays Live on Twitch, and I, I'm also a part of the ACG podcast, where every week I get to talk to uh, to awesome people like well, Karak himself, yeah, and, and some some guests as well. Yeah, I'll, uh, when it... I'll put a link down to your um to your stuff in the in the show notes so people can Thanks, check man. you out. Yeah, it's dude. I I I know that I've been in, uh, I've been going whenever I've been coming to your stream whenever I can, and it's always I always feel welcome, and I always feel you know Good. Feel like well, like we we can talk for a while. Sometimes we don't agree on ch- on on the chairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was great, and that time you came on, we talked about you know a bunch yeah. of stuff. It was, it was great. Um, as for what I've been playing recently, mostly Valhalla, and yeah. that's what I've been streaming as well. It's been a, just a, a great game to jump into. Nice. And it's very immersive. We'll, we'll talk about it, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll um, talk about it, yeah. I've also been playing a, a few other games because recently I picked up a 3090 nice. RTX. So I've been, you know, trying out a few, a few games as well. Uh, I'm also now like replaying a little bit of Jedi Fallen Order Ooh, because okay. I figured out uh, a mod that lets you play as the Mandalorian. So okay. The, you have the armor, right? You have like the, mm-hmm. the dark saber, uh, you know, voice mod. Sick. So anyways, like a really cool immersive thing because I've been watching the new season of okay, that. Okay, nice. Um, and then as for workouts, actually, so for the most part, what I do is based around body weight exercises mm-hmm. and uh, lifting weights. Okay. So uh, I have like a pull-up bar. Oh, nice. Which, so I use a lot. So I do pull-ups on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also have like um, some, some ropes that I use for, mm-hmm. you know, different body weight stuff. Nice. Um, and, and some basic, you know, weights. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, but, th- but, um, but recently I also started doing, um, you may know the name of this. Do you know like that, that roller thing? So you're like on your knees on the ground and you have like a, a little roller thing that you like roll forwards and backwards. I'm pretty sure it's just called uh, a, ro- a roller wheel. Like an wheel. ab roller? Something, ab yeah, roller, like an ab something roller, like something like that. Something like that yeah. yeah. Um, so that's, uh, I've, I've introduced that for a while now. It's, it's been really good for like core. It's intense, right? Yeah. It's really intense. Yeah. And I'm not very strong at it, but you know, it's pretty cool to add that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then today I got actually pretty excited. I got some new... Um, elastic bands, uh, Ooh. resistance bands. Nice. And it's nice because it's like a pack with different resistance grades. Mm-hmm. So for different exercises, right, you can do, uh, you know, different, effectively different weights, mm-hmm. right? So you can do like triceps, and it's really flexible mm-hmm. it, to work from or work out from home. You know, mm-hmm. allows you to do it a, a lot of stuff that it's kind of awkward otherwise. Yeah. So it's pretty good. Nice. Nice. That's dude. where I'm at. Uh. Is there anything that uh, that started like your your routine, or was it just basically staying like health conscious and and or or maybe in the past maybe you uh, you practiced or uh, not practiced but you trained for some uh, you know for some tournaments or or some sports or was it just to, was it just uh, health consciousness? It's a good question. So I um, since I was eighteen, basically I've always gone to the gym. And it's, nice. it's been like a part of my, you know, almost like identity. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. It, it was interesting because before then I hadn't done really any like exercise in any significant way. 
Yeah. But when I went to university, there was this kind of mindset that I had, which is like, okay, high school sucked. <laughs> I get now I'm going to a new city, right? Mm -hmm. New environment with new people. I'm living there because mm -hmm. it's like, you know, it's like a, a student residence. Yeah. I get to rebuild myself. Yeah. Right. And one of the ways in which I decided to do it was to introduce some like physical struggle and physical like improvement into my life and mm -hmm. be the kind of person, right? That it goes to the gym. Yeah. It's like, you're the kind of person that, you know, you, you wash your teeth. And if you mm -hmm. don't, it feels like you're going against your identity, right? I guess so, yeah. No, I'm the kind of person who, you know, takes mm -hmm. care of their yeah. teeth, right? Yeah. So it, it's a silly example, but that's like the level to which I kind of linked it to my mm -hmm. identity. So if, you know, if I didn't go to the gym for a week, mm -hmm. it felt like, you know, something's wrong, right? We need to go back. So yeah. that's how I did it. I guess, long story short, that's how I made it a habit, basically. I guess so we, since, we will right. talk about that later in, uh, during the episode, because we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, motivation. Uh, right. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, that's, that, that's, yeah, that's super interesting that you say it, because I literally like literally wrote down the same thing it's like ah. i made it my habit and then i was uh and then i had some additional things pushing me forward but yeah let's right. let's keep it for the for, for later so okay the, good yeah so you have to stay uh, but, and listen <laughs> but ju just to give you some more context yeah um because i i have a, a a chronic disease like it's like a condition okay and uh the symptoms only developed later in mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. but for the last few years, I've been like, I've had to like walk with a walking stick, for example. Wow. Okay. And I have like, you know, limited strength on my legs, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. Right. So anyways, it's not as bad as it may sound mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, there's not really pain associated. It's just mm -hmm. literally like difficulty walking, basically. Okay. And I can't run. So it's, you know, it sucks. And, but I don't yeah. want to get into that, mm -hmm. you know, like pity party. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's just to give you some context as to the stuff that I can or can't do, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why my workouts are from home first. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then secondarily also, you know, limited to what I can do. So a lot of times, for example, for cardio, my mm -hmm. options are pretty limited. Yeah. If I had space for something like a cross runner, I could pull that up. I could do that mm -hmm. uh, because it's kind of guided, right? Yeah. But I don't have that space, right? So what I do for quote unquote cardio like mm -hmm. it's you know actually like lifting weights in different intensity okay. so you know maybe like lower weight but more repetitions in a way that's a bit mm -hmm. more like you know cardio intensive and uh, throw a bit of you know like mobility exercises and that kind of stuff interesting so yeah that's kind of where i'm at and it's you know it, everybody's in a different place right. and for mm -hmm. me specifically there's some stuff i can't do but yeah. you know that's that's awesome that's uh it. you know creativity creativity you know some people are struggling to uh to get their ass to the gym and you know and you're kind of like you know uh being creative in the ways that you know to create your own you, you, can you say, gotta exercises. make it work right yeah, with man. your circumstance and you and you do look uh you know lean yourself you know you, you, you it seems that uh your um as you said your your condition doesn't really stop you from from having a, a healthy body to uh to a certain extent right yeah yeah nice nice okay um Quickly, just to say what I've been up to, uh, basically, still, uh, puppy is taking a long, a lo like a lot of my time. Crazy, crazy. I honestly, I did not expect that much. Um, maybe it's just because it was my first puppy ever. Um, maybe right. that's maybe that's why. Um, basically, every minute that she's awake, she's we are either looking at, at her or somehow actively, you know, watching her. Um, wow. So, yeah, but, uh, well, fortunately, she's only awake for about, like, let's say, three to, f well, four to five hours a day. So, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yeah, she sleeps most of the day, but, uh, yes, yeah, so that, that's been, that's been kind of nuts. I honestly did not expect it's that much work, but uh, it's, it's getting better, definitely. So, is it like playing with her, walking her, what kind so, of stuff? So, yeah, it's, it, there's a lot of stuff, right? So, she cannot walk outside yet because she's still due for the last va vaccination. So she cannot walk outside, um, but we uh, we are kind of fortunate to have a little balcony that we can take her out. So mm. she kind of associates, okay, it's uh, you know it's uh, it's party time. We go outside. 
Yeah. Um, so that's been, we've been very fortunate about that. But yeah, it's mainly just playing with her. But when we, when we are in playing with her, um, <coughs> it's mainly guiding her. So she, you know, she walks out, she walks up to a cable and, you know, she has a choice, right? I'm going to bite that shit or I'm going, <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, or I'm going to pass, you know, pass on that and just grab my bone or something like that, right? So yeah. when she when she walks up to a uh, to a cable, we say uh uh-uh, uh, and you know she she kind of knows that it's wrong. She still sometimes does it because it's a, because she's a puppy and she will do it. But uh, yeah, so it's mainly just guidance, playing with her, training. We we do like two training. We we try to do two two trainings a day. Um, so yeah, it's uh it's quite a lot of work. Um, and then what I've been playing, I've been playing a lot of assassin's creed valhalla just as just as yourself uh, i have about 35 hours right now nice um uh and we we're probably again we, we'll talk about it later but um we we won't uh, but I, i'm guessing we won't be getting into too many uh story spoilers but right i'm I'm quite far into into the game i think uh on the UB, ubisoft it says about 50 percent through okay um that's what it says uh, on mine um i've also been playing pathless that is how are you playing it isn't it it's on epic oh is it yes it's on epic and that game is something i did not expect like it just i was like you know what this looks pretty cool like the mobility right it it kind of looked to me like like warframe with journey kind of a thing um in the in the weirdest way possible but it works it is so good. We'll, we're going to talk about it later when we talk about what has been out uh, the last, uh, well, basically since the last podcast. Um, but yeah, all you, all you need to know is that it's really surprisingly good. But we'll talk about it later. And then lastly, yeah. I've been kind of binging some uh, Diablo on my Switch. Honestly, the, you know, nice. new season came out. Uh, and uh, since it's on the Switch and I can play it basically whenever, whenever the, the puppy is, you know, whenever I'm downstairs with my puppy because currently I'm upstairs and she's, uh, she's always uh, downstairs. Yeah. Um, so it's just having that Switch in my hands, you know, that I can, I can just take it anywhere. Um, and yeah, for the workouts, last uh, two weeks I have been kind of stationary i haven't been doing much and i honestly couldn't get myself to work out at home mm. um just working working out with the bands just doesn't cut it for me anymore uh whenever we had the first lockdown it was good and i think i kept myself up but currently i just don't have any uh any drive in me to do like in uh, at home workouts so recently the gyms opened up but not you know, not publicly, but there are some classes that you could go to. Okay. Uh, you go to a class, and they literally let you into the gym. So that's basically what I've been doing. Um, honestly, over the last week and a half, I had two workouts. So, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, mainly mainly just because of the lack of time that I um, that I had. But uh, yeah, it's been. You it's know, been... there's one interesting thing in yeah. regarding Valhalla. You talked yeah. about. You said. Uh, you're like fifty percent, mm-hmm. dude. I have. I just looked at it. I have thirty-seven hours, and I'm only thirty-one percent. So, so I, I, I fucked th- around a lot, I guess. I guess so, but I, I guess that's good, right? Because you, it uh, is. I yeah. mean, I haven't been really limiting myself, you know. Basically, right. What I'm doing is I'm going through the story, but I'm doing like side stuff here, side stuff here, and I'm. Yeah. And I've, I've gotten a lot of uh, equipment actually as well. Well, the gear. Um, dude, I. I I have very little. We'll, we'll maybe talk yeah, about that. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. when you want to slot because, uh, in the because conversation. It, 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 there, there's been a lot of changes to the, the gear system. But first of all, let's jump into the first topic. Uh, I'm not sure if, you, if you're aware. Um, basically, EA is basically kind of a new, kind of a new thing. EA is, is adding a microtransaction tracker into FIFA. So give me some context because I read it in the topics, but I, I don't have the context on it. Sure. So there's been a lot of... Um, let's say backlash obviously about how the microtransactions work still in the my team i guess mode in fifa right the open packs the open pack the random players pop out you can spend thousands of dollars and not get the best um whoa almost like a gacha like yeah it's basically like a loot box so you don't have access to all players no basically you... You cannot you get like random. Yeah, you cannot buy a player. 
So for example, let's say I, I go in there, I want to just wreck some noobs and I want to buy Lionel Messi. <laughs> no, <laughs> that doesn't happen. You have to open packs, right? Okay. Um, and you... this is for PvP only or also? No, it's also for uh, PvE. Also PvE, okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So basically that, that, that's been really the topic of conversation ever, basically ever since I think FIFA 18, 19 or something like that. So quite mm -hmm. a long time. Um, and there's been quite a few, well, governments around the world that they said, well, this is fucking gambling, right? Like you pay and there are actually certain services right now which allow you to uh, like, because I think there's somehow a way to trade players. So you can act, so you cannot buy a certain player uh, from the EA store, well, from the FIFA store, but you can actually buy it off of another player. So right, people are marketing. Right, so you're getting like you know the money back. I guess it's basically it's basically like full on gambling, right? Like you open packs to get, uh, you know, like a a player which will give you a lot of cash, right? Yeah. Um. So yeah, basically, EA has been marketing this as surprise mechanics. Ha! It's fun. To open packs and not know what's inside it's they they, they compared it to uh kin, to the kinder eggs right to the yeah uh, except the surprise is always shit in those there's no <laughs> there's no level of like yeah it's always plastic it's, it's always, always bad. shitty <laughs> yeah. um but um it, it, they they used to be good i remember as a kid i'd be like whoa what what's in there right mm -hmm. but at some point it just yeah they, they used to have actually metal parts in them but we're going on, on a tangent here. Tangent, yeah. <laughs> uh, basically, and yes, yeah, so there's been a lot of backlash. A lot of governments are saying that this is not okay. And EA is trying to obviously keep their markets, right? Because most of their income is coming from microtransactions. Um, so what they are saying is that, well, now it's going to be better because we'll be, a, we'll be, um, we'll give the, we'll give the players the ability to track their okay. microtransactions um but that seems to be a fail as well right so what does it mean to track a microtransaction uh so it allows you to see some stats right so for example how much uh, how many points you have bought uh, over the last month how many packs you have opened okay uh, how many cards you have gotten so mm -hmm. and that right there is already my first problem um, it doesn't even allow you to track the money you have spent. It doesn't show you in actual dollars how, you, how much you have spent. It shows you how many points you have bought. So that there already is, you know, they're not putting like a real number in front of you. It's, it's, it's their vir virtual currency. Yeah. Um, so basically just the points bought, um, which still puts the vir virtual wall in front of you rather than, you know, having like an actual number. You know, for me... If I have spent two hundred dollars, or I have bought, uh, let's say, two hundred thousand EA points, or whatever the hell is called, obviously I have more context of how uh, how much two hundred dollars is, right? Yeah, but you still need to do the mental gymnastics of converting. Yeah, and a lot of times, if you're in the frenzy, mm -hmm. your brain is not thinking about that. Mm -hmm. Right, you're just like, it's points, whatever. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, basically um i noticed a very so basically i i noticed a very something very very similar in assassin's creed valhalla mm. um because there are micro microtransactions in, in there as well but they're only well actually no they're not only cosmetic because you buy the cosmetics but the cosmetic comes comes with the gear right so you're getting some sort of a gear set bonus yeah um but basically what I've noticed is that um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla makes you buy those points, which are called Helix points. Helix, yeah. And, and ba basically, as soon, uh, it, it was just my observation, but as soon as I had the Helix point, as soon as I bought the Helix, Helix points for, for science, <laughs> <laughs> I felt much less connection to that currency. So... The, the the moment when I when I was buying the points was actually kind of hard because like fuck I'm buying some microtransaction bullshit you know um, right but then afterwards when I actually had the helix points it was like 
done and i and i yeah. and i spent them all um so and that's actually you know that brings me back to that ea stuff when they are showing you just the points yeah that's that's probably on yeah. purpose right yeah yeah the, yeah because when you see like oh helix points that doesn't mean anything to you but mm -hmm. if it said like hey this like boat skin costs two dollars mm -hmm. you'd be like whoa yeah like two real bucks yeah for like you know, a ridiculous exactly. skin. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it would say like something like $15 for a skin. Yeah. Who it's easier to that? dissociate that way. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, so basically, all, I, all I'm saying is that they're just in damage control and just a lot of governments around the world are basically uh, are making the equation now that loot boxes equals gambling. Not in Yeah, I think games. it's a good thing that you know, because it's almost like a blessing in disguise. The way mm -hmm. that, you know, FIFA doing it creates a visibility mm -hmm. that you don't have otherwise. Yeah. So, like I was saying earlier, this already exists in gacha games. Yeah. Right? So, I don't know. Are you familiar with, like, gacha game? what they are, gacha games? Like, uh, is that something that they give you some... Um... So, you start playing the game. So, some, uh, I'm not sure. Um, something along the lines of Genshin Impact um right yeah so yeah. so in and I, i'm not big on those games yeah, i just have friends right but what i know is like uh genshin i haven't even played but mm -hmm. as far as i know you can't buy a character mm -hmm. what you buy is like you know currency and mm -hmm. packs and, and like you know you get these randomized mm -hmm. drops yep. and you have a chance of getting yes. certain characters by rarity and all that stuff so it's like a very similar dynamic mm -hmm. Um, and countless, you know, card-based games mm -hmm. uh, are also like this, where you know, to get cards, it's it's a random drop. Yeah. You could even go uh, to to something that's been not even digital, so like a Magic the Gathering, mm -hmm. right? Or like I don't know, Pokemon cards, mm -hmm. Dragon Ball Z cards. Mm -hmm. When you buy a pack, it's the same principle, yes. right? The surprise random. mechanic. Is yes, there. I guess so. So I, I think it's just so this is my long way of saying it's been there for a long time, but I think it's nice that now it's getting more visibility and maybe some, you know, um some some stuff will be put in place. Yeah, exactly. I don't know how you feel, like how much intervention do we want from because you were saying like even government, mm -hmm. you know, stepping in and like, you know, making some regulations. How do you feel <laughs> about that? Would you be in favor of that, or are you more like you know, uh, freedom and honestly individual I, responsibility? Yeah, I do not really care for FIFA. Like they can do, yes, they, they can do whatever they want with their games. I don't, you know, they can monetize the fuck out of them. I don't really care. the 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 thing that rubs me the wrong way is that this game is E for everyone. Yeah, and it has gambling in it. And kids don't understand that if they buy a pack, then some sort of amount of money comes out of their parents' account or something like that. No, but they, they have, like, how are they getting that money? Are they, like, sneaking in and stealing the card or something? Like, how? Well, if you're, um, if you're, if you're playing on a PS4, right? Um, right. Then you have a card linked to your account. And then when you make a purchase on FIFA, obviously, you know, again, there are a bunch of parent control stuff that you can yeah. do, but not everybody does them. And I don't think... Right, but I, I would argue then you should do that <laughs> as Definitely. a parent. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> you, should, you should be on top of that. But basically, the, all I'm saying is that FIFA should not be E for everyone. There, are, there, there's, there's a part of gambling in the game. doesn't matter if there's parental control on the, uh, on the console or not. Mm -hmm. um it should be like 16 and up i think that's where that's where the gambling yeah, comes but in even then like how do you enforce it because realistically nowadays you know a kid is gonna get his hands or her hands on that game probably right if mm -hmm. they really want to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think the the more powerful approach is for for the parent to be really aware mm -hmm. of those like predatory sure. um you know i don't know strategies that yeah. games employ and then like talk to their kids about it like hey listen they're gaming your brain with this shit right mm -hmm. uh and we're not gonna give you the money to right to to buy this stuff yeah. and it's for your your own good i mm -hmm. don't know explain it right mm -hmm. in some way 
Um, I think there's a bit of like individual ownership they need to take over that stuff. Sure. I'm not saying maybe governments do need to make some regulations to control yep. the more predatory, right, mm -hmm. uh, versions where we see it. But... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, basically, as you said, uh, kids will probably still get it, but then um, they will have to get that game with their parents. And the parents will be like, oh, wait. Well, at least I hope. Why is it 16 plus? What's in here? And then they, they read on the label, gambling. Because th that's basically what it's going to be. On the label, it will say that it has parts of gambling. That's basically all, all that I want. I don't care if if, uh, if FIFA has it. I hope it dies. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, don't, I don't play FIFA either, yeah. so I'm with you there. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah. That was basically our... Uh, so... That, that's pretty much us ranting for 20 minutes on oh god something's happening <laughs> um, so someone is, is the dog probably. yeah the dog is, uh, is going crazy right now um basically next let's just move on from that um yeah uh, as uh, as we said that's pretty much beating a, 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 dead, a dead horse there um right. next gen is out right did you get any next gen fuck no consoles no, no. Because <laughs> um, you're a PC guy, right? As I'm, well, I'm a PC guy, but I, I, I'm not sure if you remember, but I also had a PS4 that broke on me. Well, basically, it didn't work on me when I tried to play Ghost of Tsushima online. Oh, true. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, well, PS and Sony said, "Hey, your your warranty is over. Fuck you." Yeah. <laughs> so they said we can take it but you have to pay for the repairs i was like i was like you know what i'll probably just wait for like ps5 pro or whatever mm -hmm. the next thing um i'm not uh, basically i'm just gonna say here that i'm not a big fan of getting any hardware on release when it comes to yes um when it comes to consoles um we've we have already seen uh quite a bit of problems with well with uh, with the ps5 obviously Kerrick's one died obviously that you know that's that's just one ps5 it's right it's one unit it's yeah. one unit i'm not saying all of them will die but uh, that's just some indication of some some sort of problem right yeah mm, so basically i was just gonna say that uh, i try to stay away from buying uh, like new hardware like consoles on release what about you yeah no i think that's really wise just in general for any hardware because i i recently also bought a gpu yeah i always me, wait me for third-party reviews mm -hmm. for any yes. hardware right so uh, i'm not moved by nvidia's slides mm -hmm. in their presentations you know it, it, i'm always like cool let let me hear what you know steve from gamers nexus yes and right jay's two cents what those linus, guys have to say yeah. about it linus right uh, and then we'll take it from there and in the same way, consoles is, is how I approach it, which pretty much means, because we know if you don't pre-order, mm -hmm. you're not going to get one, mm -hmm. right? Because we know it's it's a limited launch, right? So I knew from the get-go I wasn't going to get my hands yes. on, for example, a PS5 mm -hmm. because I wasn't going to buy it before reviews. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's so I was okay with that. So mm -hmm. I, I had my mindset on picking up a PS5, mm -hmm. you know, later in the game, yes. probably a few months when all the issues have been ironed out. Because yep. the other thing that bothers me is when you're a like a pioneer on on something, mm -hmm. there's not enough support and like f uh, forum threads and stuff. So mm -hmm. like if you run into an issue, the chances that there's a thread solving it and you know. Mm -hmm you know, smart people with good solutions for it, it's a smaller chance, right? If everybody's dealing with it for the first time. Yeah. If you come into the game f five months later, people have figured out the, the, the problems. Exactly. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, basically, I'm kind of the same. I'm, I'm also going to uh, buy a PS5 uh, later down the line. Uh, but basically... Um, I won't be getting an Xbox because everything that I will want to play will come to PC or PS5. Um, right. All, as far as I know, all games that will, are coming to Xbox will also come to PC at some point uh, if it will, if it's not going to be on release. Um, yeah. So yeah, I have a beast PC. Uh, well, PS5, I'm going to let the, 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 the kings be ironed out. And that's... Yeah, basically, uh, uh, I kind of told myself that I, I'm going to either 
wait a year or wait for the next counterpart, which would be like PS5 Pro or, or you know, like basically just kind of like the next iteration, better cooling, maybe smaller size, because as it is right now, it's kind of a big ding dong. So, yeah, <laughs> but you know what? I'm funny enough. I'm OK with the size because I think that actually allows for the lower yes. noise, right? Because you know how this shit works. Mm -hmm. If it's a bigger fan, you know, it's able to push more air. to move the same amount of air with a lower RPM. Uh, yeah. RPM. yeah. yeah? So it it's just like, you know, basic stuff where they're with a way bigger fan, they now can move a lot of heat with yeah, with less uh noise. So I think I think they've done a good job there. And I, I'm happy to see that, you know, those are good systems, right? So PS5, mm -hmm. Xbox, Series X, uh sure th there have been issues that come up, mm -hmm. but you know, a lot of games are being pushed to 60 FPS, which some time ago wasn't even something that was being talked about a lot. F mm -hmm. The FPS yep. wasn't even being marketed as a big thing, yep. especially from Sony's end. We didn't know yes. whether they were going to push for that at all. Yeah. And now we see it everywhere. It's almost become an expectation, mm -hmm. which I think it's great. Yeah. But I'm happy it turned out that way. Mm -hmm. So overall, it's, you know, I think it's a good... <laughs> release even yeah. though like low volume but yeah let um let you know let it be heard from me that ps5 is better than any pc at the moment uh, when it comes to like loading speeds and the speeds that you know on the on the ssd and stuff like that um like my pc would beat it when it comes to graphics performance and let's say you know pro uh, processing power but when it comes to sheer load time like speed of loading the ssd is just far superior than anything that we have currently on the PCs. Yeah, so the the thing is we have to be careful because it's not really comparable in the sense that it's a closed system, right? Yeah. So they have their uh their SSD on the board, right? Mm -hmm. Right on the So it, it's on. all like yeah, it's almost like not quite like an a, a Mac or like an Apple product because mm -hmm. it's not as like closed system. But in that sense, it is because it's like a black box, yeah. right? It's it's really everything made, uh, coupled uh, mm -hmm. to work together well. And in the same way, when devs make games, mm -hmm. they can optimize for that box, right? Because they know exactly what what's what the game is running yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. So a game that runs, you know, maybe not as great on your PC, can run pretty well comparatively on the console, even though mm -hmm. maybe you have twice as much compute power yeah. on your gpu right so yeah I, i'm always a bit like careful with when comparing those because it, it's not like it's hard yeah a direct yeah comparison yeah i i, I guess i was i was saying that when you compare stat by stat right when you go to like you know uh, like raw load times cpu speed like you know you, you go you, yeah. you go to for example like uh, memory cast timings and stuff like that my my uh, my pc is just uh, better but again as you said it's you know it's it's those optimizations that are done for that box they know exactly what's in that box yeah um so yeah speaking about box a box of cyberpunks of cyberpunks has leaked right um the ps4 uh, version has has leaked into the wild uh, i'm not sure if you looked at any of the gameplays probably not Nope. No. No. Good. Good. Yeah. It's basically. Never. Yeah. Basically, I was uh, uh, basically just PS4 five. Uh, sorry, PS4 five. Yeah. Nice. PS4 <laughs> four copies have surfaced, and the most likely source is being the uh, being an Amazon warehouse. Um, basically, leaks have flooded the interwebs. Um, they're everywhere. So I was just gonna throw in a you know a little bit of a warning. Watch oh. out for any comment sections. Uh, for any clickbait videos that you might be seeing, um, there's a lot. Uh, even if you go to Twitter and you go under, you know, any cyberpunk connected account, you go into the comment section. There are some people trying to ruin the game for you. So just, you know, just just be careful. Just be careful. Um, mm -hmm. And also, uh, st st staying on staying on that cyberpunk uh, uh, topic. New gameplay was shown. I'm not sure if you're if you if you watched any gameplay or you you're just trying to keep it as a. I've I've kept myself from seeing any of it, man. But what did you think? Um. So basically, no, I, I didn't. I tried to not look for any like 
any spoiler stuff. So I try to kind of like block out any uh, meaningful dialogue and stuff like that. But ve basically because they've shown um, the game running on PS4, PS5, Xbox One X and Xbox Series X, very impressive scaling when it comes to um, the, the current gen consoles. Well, the... I guess it's still current, and the next gen is... I guess we can call it the old gen. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I don't know the terminology. Let's anymore. just call it the old gen. On the, on, the, on the PS4 and Xbox One, very, very impressive scaling. Um, you can definitely see the downgrade, I would say, but it's, it's nothing that I thought it would be. Um, I, and basically, I'm kind of glad that they took more time off uh, for the game because it seems that they really ironed out the um, the optimization. And as I said in the last video, uh, sorry, in my last podcast, that's kind of like a win-win for everybody, not just for the old-gen consoles, right? Yeah. Um, because uh, those optimizations will also come to the PC. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> well, sometimes we see they give a lot of love to the console optimizations and then it, it runs like dog ass mm -hmm. on PC. Yeah. But, you know, we, we can give them some, some Let's good give faith. Let's give them the benefit yeah. of the doubt, right? Yeah. Benefit of the doubt. And also, it's very promising that they said they've been working closely with NVIDIA. Um, and apparently yes. from, from the previews, it, um, the game is amazing when it's, when it's running an RTX and you can definitely see. Dude, this is what I wanted to tell you because di didn't you just get a 3080 as yeah, well I did, recently? especially yeah, right? for Cyberpunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I was, I was just checking because sometimes I, yeah. you know, I talk to a lot of people, but um, what I was thinking in that, that's the perfect game for right? RTX mm -hmm. because think of it, um, Everything about the environments is reflective surfaces. Yes, like everything. It doesn't matter if you're on the street; it's glass everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. If you're indoors, it's all neon. It's all mm -hmm. like reflective. Mm -hmm. So it's the perfect scenario Reflection, for RTX to shadows, to shine. lighting. Yeah. Just yeah, it just looks amazing. Honestly, um, from what we saw, it looks amazing. But I cannot wait to uh, to see it with my own eyes. Um, yeah, man. We've got two weeks. Two weeks actually today. There's, there's no way they're pu they're pushing it again. There's no way. Oh. Everything's ready. Uh, you know. Oh you, man, please in, don't. <laughs> in in Poland, in Poland, every bus stop has you know Cyberpunk tenth of right. December. You know, it, so. it would be really unfortunate to push it further because now Dude. you would like actually miss you know Christmas holidays where a lot of people that's the time they have to play it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, and you know, obviously, it's like Christmas presents and stuff like that. Buying it yeah. for you for the buying it for the for the little Jimmy, right? So let's actually move on to the next topic, which is the motivation for the workouts. That uh, uh, so you maybe you want to take it away? Okay, so you asked me for topics, <laughs> and I think this is an interesting one. I want to get yeah. your take because you hear everybody talking about how to get motivated, mm -hmm. right? And what I don't hear a lot is people having, and uh, let me see if I can phrase this because mm -hmm. it's kind of a, co a complex idea. I don't have mm -hmm. it figured out myself, but it's this idea that you, because motivation is fleeting mm -hmm. and it's not always there, <laughs> yes. right? We should develop systems that are robust, mm -hmm. which means they work whether or not you have motivation. Mm -hmm. Right. So because we know motivation comes and goes, instead of, you know, relying on it to get mm -hmm. your workout, mm -hmm. create a system, you know, a habit, right? A system where you do the thing with or without motivation. And maybe if you have motivation, you do it better, right? You get a better workout. That's mm -hmm. great. But you, it doesn't mean that if you run out of motivation, let's say you're having a rough week, uh, that doesn't mean that you're not, you know, doing, like in this case, working out is what we're mm -hmm. talking about, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I've always found that to be crucial. So if you, if you decide, and this is important, right? Mm -hmm. Deciding, because it's not like it would be nice to, to work out, right? Yeah. I'm saying deciding. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a big word, right? So we're saying we're putting time and resources aside mm -hmm. to do this shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're saying, okay, we've decided that working out is something 
we want to do is we want it as a habit. We want it as part of our identity. Okay. That's like step one, mm -hmm. right? And it's a big one. But then step two is how do you responsibly program your system so that it works mm -hmm. regardless of whether you're motivated or not? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I guess like, what do you think about that? And is that something you've thought about? Um, I think about it a lot. Uh, since I'm also uh, a personal trainer, uh, I also try to motivate my clients, right? Um, yeah. Then it, they have a better chance of making progress themselves and they may have a better chance of coming back to get me more money. Um, but honestly, I am kind of shit at it. Um, I, I just had my own way of kind of motivating myself. Um, Basically, I think it comes down to finding, finding, uh, trying to find an exercise, like the best, like the most motivating factor. So for me, at the beginning, when I started working out, when I was like fifteen, sixteen, um, it was like I I was just a chubby kid. I was really overweight. Um, so for me, it was just looking better. Um, right. and so my motivation was to not look like a like a piece of rubber on the on, on the street or like like you know, just just pouring on the sides that's right? rough you, we need to work on your inner dialogue man. it's a little rough right <laughs> i i'm i'm honestly i'm kind of a rough you, you can say to myself and i'm, I, I'm uh -huh. kind of always pushing myself forward not in yeah. the nicest ways possible but that little part of just me looking better kind of gave me a gateway to build a love relationship with the actual pain and the hardship of yes. working out. Um, and then later also my competitiveness came out uh, when I started to lift more heavyweights and I started getting into bodybuilding. So later from just looking good, it went into, oh, I can actually compete and actually beat people in how I look. Right. Um, so, but basically, I think it comes down to finding what it, um, it's hard to say, right? Because for some people, it might be health, right? Maybe they just got a diagnosis from their doctor. They need to start working right. out or they might be in yeah. trouble. Uh, for some people might be looking good for like, like it was for myself, maybe getting a girl, right? Or getting that, that, uh, that boy that, that they want to, uh, right. that they want to impress. Finding that one thing. And keeping it in your head for 30 days as you go, as you basically start working out. And later, basically what I noticed is that uh, I, uh, it got to a point for me where after a few months, I just felt shit when I didn't go to the gym. Right. As you said, you know, as you said at the beginning, right? It, yeah, you, I think it connects to what I was saying. It it gets to a point where you feel bad for not going to the gym because it it yeah. becomes such a big part of you and you feel like, let's just be honest here you feel good when you work out like yes it, it releases yeah. endorphins and uh, so there's, there's yeah but also you think of your you come to think of yourself as the kind of person who has those healthy habits mm -hmm. so when you don't do them mm -hmm. it feels like you're going against the grain right yeah. it's like you no. Know, there's something off there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, that, that kind of ties into fitness, but that, uh, well, into uh, actual working out, but uh, I guess that also ties into your diet later, right? When you start eating crap, mm. you're like, oh God, I probably shouldn't be eating that's this, right? That's a difficult right? one, right? Um, yeah. But you, you know why? I, I think that's a really difficult one because there's, there's um, a, a period of time between what you eat Mm -hmm. and the effect that has on your body. So you could eat like bullshit today, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you won't notice like any, let's say, bad effect directly. Mm -hmm. It's over time, right? So like if over time you're eating shit, you're, you're going to feel like shit mm -hmm. as well, right? Because it affects your brain, brain chemistry and like body metabolism, all that stuff. But I think because of that disconnect, right? It, it's more difficult for people to see the consequence mm -hmm. directly of what they're eating. And also there's, uh, I definitely agree with that. Yeah. It's, it's the effect of your current eating might come out next week, but they also might come out in 30 years. Right. And that's 
even more difficult. Right. To, yeah, because we know, like, we tell people, hey, smoke, smoking is killing you. And they're like, I'll worry about it in 50 years. Exactly. Right. right? And then and, they, yeah. they might wake up with a lung cancer. You know, right. Like, like, let's say 10 years from now, they're like, fuck, what do I do? We stop smoking. Maybe you should have done it 10 years ago. Um, yeah. I guess it's easier said than done because, you know, then it comes to like self gratification and, you mm -hmm. know, and you uh, like rewarding yourself for certain stuff. Like I was the worst, I, I was the worst, right? When I started working out, I was, I was a smoker back then. Um, I, I used to give myself smokes as a reward for working out. Like how, how crazy is that? Right. Like, huh. like when you smoke, you, it's, it's been pro proven to that it decreases the, your ability to process more oxygen and stuff like that. Um, mm. so yeah, I, I guess we get, we are getting into like a, a murky territory, but, uh, yeah, you, you're definitely right. There's a lot of, there's a, like th that, that kind of connection is missing that, okay, I eat yeah. this cheeseburger today and it's not going to do anything, uh, n not going to do anything to me, but actually in your body, there's quite a lot that your body does to process that, just that, that bullshit that you just put in. Yeah. And there's also been a lot of like movements, you can say movements and um, self-made gurus that release books and that put literally, uh, you know, there's that, let's say a bunch of studies, it's a, it's a water, right? Like let's say it's a, it's a pool of water and then right. they literally just pour shit into that water by saying, no, this guy's not right. This guy's not right. I did this for, for 30 days and it worked for me. So it must work for you as well. Yeah. Um, so th th there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that, I think. So, like, w one thing that I, I wanted to mention as well, because a lot of people, you know, listen to these conversations and they're like, yeah, that sounds great, but, you know, I'm, I'm not like you, right? I didn't start going to mm -hmm. the gym when I was 18. Like yes. I was saying, like, you know, I'm almost, like, lucky that I did that in mm -hmm. some ways. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the saying, I think it's a good saying, it's, when is the best time to start something? 10 years ago. Yeah. Right? Because right. you're fucking great at it now yeah. if you started it 10, 10 years, years ago. ago. Uh, but you know what's the second best thing? To start it today. Yes. Right? And it, it, for me, like the thing with starting today is like start starting in a small way. Because what you see mm -hmm. every time, you know, this, I've seen it so often, like going to the gym throughout the years, you mm -hmm. see the person and you can tell immediately yeah the person that's doing it for the first week mm -hmm. they're going like every day to the gym for you know for like two hours it lasts one week mm -hmm. right week two they're out mm -hmm. and they're never back to the gym yes until they get another like hit the bottom of the barrel right so <coughs> like the the power of incremental changes mm -hmm. is a big has been a big thing for me okay so like yeah. even you're talking about diet and it's mm -hmm. the same thing there. So, you know, um, like maybe there's one thing in the diet that mm -hmm. I tweak mm -hmm. and I say, is that working? Right. Yes. And if it is, I'll keep it there. Do, do I feel better with yes. that? Right. So you integrate that. Mm -hmm. And because it's an incremental change, it's fairly easy for you to put that in. Mm -hmm. When you talk about workouts, you could say, Hey, I've, I've never worked out. Right. Yeah. Can, can I do like 10 minutes, you know, every two days? Yes. Of like taking something and like pretending to lift it. I don't know. But yeah. like start yeah. super small, right? Um, and then like create that kind of habit. It's almost like um, uh, a wedge that you mm -hmm. use, right? So mm -hmm. it's a, it's a Get in the, the, door. the tip of the wedge, right? Is just like very thin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and then you, you, you literally, uh, you like little by little start uh, creating that opening. Trying and to open. It just feels yeah. natural. Um, it, it, for me, a lot of it is just breaking the inertia. Mm -hmm. So let, let me give you an example mm -hmm. for, you know, how I kind of feel this stuff. And then you can tell me if mm -hmm. you also uh, experienced mm -hmm. that. So for me, for example, let's say maybe I'm having a really bad day. I'm not motivated. Okay. You know, like, you know, it's, it's difficult with my legs. It's painful, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but I say, hey, I, I, I said I was going to, you know, go out for a walk. Right. Or do yep. a small workout. And a lot of times it's good enough, like my goal isn't to do a big workout or a big walk, mm -hmm. is to actually just get out the door. Yeah. That's, 
that's my like must do. Anything beyond that is optional. So mm -hmm. once I start the workout, once I start the walk, how much I want to do, I leave it up to, you know, how much I want to do. Mm -hmm. But because you break the inertia, you're out the door. Mm -hmm. It's always like, <laughs> might as well do a little bit more, right? Yeah. Because yeah. you, you've already broken the, like the, that initial barrier, I feel. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it for me is creating Might those as little, well, you know? little as habits. Well. Yeah, creating those little openings where it's very easy and natural for you to go one step further, basically. Uh, and that goes to diet, that goes to, you know, working out. It's kind of how I think about this kind of stuff. Yeah. Does that connect for you in some way? It does. <laughs> um, I do a lot of um, consulting when it comes to uh, dieting. I, I, you know, I, I have my you know clients on on a regular basis, and people when they usually arrive to, uh, arrive and they get my first uh, first program, they're like, "Oh my god, I have to work out!" <laughs> they're like, "Oh my god, I have to work out!" I'm like, "Okay, by workout, I mean you can literally walk for thirty minutes a day." Right. And that's you know that's what you start with, and then uh, and then a week from now, it, even by itself it becomes an hour because you, because you've done this half an hour that you dreaded at the beginning, but now you're like you know what I'm actually enjoying this this podcast that I'm listening by the way Boosted Fit Games listen to that shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, while while you walk or whatever um, I'm enjoying this podcast I'm enjoying this. The book that I'm listening, or, or I'm just, uh, or I'm just enjoying the outside. Well, let me just go for 15 minutes more. It becomes 45, then becomes 60, and then you know, and then a day, and then you know, a few weeks from then, it becomes. Oh, let's go for a 15 minute jog rather than just walking. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So yeah, it's definitely about incremental changes. Uh, I definitely agree with that, and I, I do that with all my clients, unless they tell me they, they want to go cold turkey. If they tell me they want to go cold turkey, I fucking give it to them. Um, <laughs> I'm like, you wanted right. it, you wanted right. it. Um, no, but basically, this, this just applies to the diet. Like, um, so what I usually do with my clients is I usually will switch them. Um, usually, the first phase is increasing the fiber in the diet, and then second phase is removing the processed what? foods. So, t tell me, say more about that. Why is fiber the first? like the starting point for you? So fiber is just something that we are currently still, well, the scientists are currently still studying a lot because we're like, well, fiber is just comes in and comes out. We don't even yeah. get any, anything from it. Yes, we do not get anything from it, but our gut bacteria do. And uh, basically it's like a fuel for our gut bacteria, for the healthy ones. Uh, for the for the good ones and uh, usually the the pathogenic the opportunistic bacteria in our gut that are well are not good for you they usually feed on like very quick releasing carbohydrates like sugars and and and, and you know like basically just uh, isolated stuff um so i'm saying that we should focus on fiber because it it heals and it fuels the the healthy gut bacteria uh, and uh and since our brain has more connections to the gut than running through our spine, then there must be something there, right? For example, if, and there are actually studies showing this, that when you have a healthy microbiome in your gut, your, uh, your mental health is, uh, well, is improved. You, you don't have as much downs, uh, you know, like down states and stuff like that. So it, it's, still a, uh, uh, it's still a murky uh, water when it comes to um, the the gut microbiome, but we're getting a lot more studies about that. So that's basically why you can never go, uh, you can never go too much with fiber. Like it's it's, right. it's it's hard to get too much fiber. For example, it's not hard to get too much fat. It's not hard to get too much protein, at, at least in my opinion. Uh, but uh, we are always concerned that you know we are oh we are protein deficient. You know we should be getting that much protein. I'm like. Fuck that! We're fiber deficient, right? Like, and think a it, lot of people are, right? Uh, think about and, this. Even myself, I have to like police myself. And yeah, like, hey, you're not eating enough fiber. Fiber. Yeah. <laughs> think yeah. about this: uh, an average, uh, an average American eats 15 grams of fiber a day. Are that's really very little. That's very little. The recommended very little. recommended is 30. So the recommended is twice that. 
Um, but compare this to like the the Paleolithic, the, you know, the the old days, you know, the the big boys of fiber, right? The <laughs> our our ancestors, right? They were eating upwards of 120 to 150 grams. So they are s- smashing it five times the the actual recommendation. I uh, I usually shoot for about between eighty to a hundred grams. That's that's what I shoot. Obviously, again, I don't do that cold turkey on somebody because right, when right. when their intestines get that for the first time, oof, it's a they it's, don't know what the fuck to do with that. It's fiber. a French Revolution, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, go, going back, basically, yes, it's incremental changes um, and. Finding that motivation is basically just finding whatever it motivates you. I know it's very cliche to say and it's easy to say, but it's it's really that easy. Um, be it you know impressing that that gal, be it uh, you know, just looking better, uh, be it actually you know um, making somebody bite their words, you know, just, or yeah. or maybe just being or maybe just you know just getting in shape. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's your health related, related like mm-hmm. basically. It was like for me going plant based. It was from my uh, from my studies, but also because of my health issues that I had. So there you go. Um, that's pretty much the motivation out uh, out the way. Um, again, let's 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 go back to gaming. Uh, we are we are yeah. ru- we are running very quickly on on our time here. Uh, out uh, out since the last uh, since the last time that I've done the podcast was Godfall. I heard that you played it. What's your uh, yeah, opinion? Played it. I've played it a bunch. I would say it's very steep in price for what it is. Yes, gives, but uh, it, it speaks to me in the style. I know some people say it's gaudy, looking like it's the style is very like mm-hmm. you know, golden shower was thrown around as a term. Champagne uh, in showers some, in some videos. Yeah, um, look, I dig it. Right. So okay. for me, it's like eye candy. Right. I like mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Uh, I like the combat, and there's some some like timing based where you have to parry stuff mm-hmm. and and react to things. It, it feels really good to play. Uh, furthermore, playing with friends was a blast, and mm-hmm. you okay. can play the whole thing, right? Because yes. a lot of games nowadays, it's like, oh, you have to enter a menu, create a party, disband party, recreate mm-hmm. it, watch mm-hmm. a cutscene, and and like playing with friends a campaign is is difficult, right? Uh, mm-hmm. This was very seamless, so I, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. I don't think it has the lasting its proposition of you know something like a Destiny Two, mm-hmm. where, where it's clearly a service yeah. game, right? This they said it's not a service game. <laughs> this like you know this is the full package, so to speak. <laughs> You're getting now. This is what we offer, right? Not and to it. I, I I I respect that. I okay. I, I like that approach. Yes. Uh, I do think there's a there you know it's a, a little bit lacking for that price because it's a little bit above full price even Definitely. where I bought it it's very steep. So when it comes, uh, so actually uh, let me say uh, it's a 62 critic average on open oh, on open critic and okay. only nine percent recommending. Um, so kind of yikes. Um, yeah, pretty. And for price. myself, I did buy it. And I did play it, and I did refund it. Okay. Uh, let me give you a quick rundown why I have a very, very um, set in stone uh, like um, expectation of a melee combat game. <laughs> and when I get into Godfall, and it doesn't have movement queuing, it doesn't have action queuing. So, mm. for example, let's say you're attacking, you're in the, you know, you're in the attacking animation. Yes. Uh, up until you finish it, there's no way. Uh, basically, you have to there's learn. There's no memory for. There's no when memory. You press. So when you're even if you're pressing dodge, uh, and you stop pressing it before you finish, after you finish that uh, animation, you're just standing there. It didn't cue the dodge that you were pressing. Yep. Right. Uh, so that's a number one, and then uh, the number two as a I fucking forgot. <laughs> there, that's there was a, a number one, two though. punchline. There was a number yeah. two punchline. God damn it. That annoys yeah. me as well because what that means is like for people who maybe don't understand what we're trying to say. Yeah. You actually have to spam the button in some way because you you need to you don't know exactly when the animation is mm-hmm. going to end. Yeah. And the next command only registers after the animation is done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you kind of have to spam the next move. Yes. Un- 
in in some occasions to make sure you you do it as soon as possible. So basically, as soon as I saw that, I was like, I'm out. I I'm 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 not willing to. If if everything around the uh, around all those systems was fun enough that I would want to uh, learn the actual timings, I would be okay with that. I would be like, okay, the rest of the game is amazing. I can live with that one fall. But as soon as I see that the story is, eh, well, is, is there even a story? Yeah. Um, and you there know, is. And... What's funny is it's like the voice acting I found pretty good. Yeah. The story is really poor. Yeah. So it's almost like a very good salesman trying to sell you a really poor product. <laughs> One thing that I would say is that the gear game is pretty cool. Um, yeah. I, I like what they did with the gear, but again, your, your trinkets don't really change how you look. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with that? Like, I, I understand you have this like, war for let's say a god frame right mm -hmm. <laughs> a yeah. god frame kind of a thing that makes you look a certain way but why not enhance it when you pick up certain trinkets uh, i don't know i agree i'm not a not a big fan so as soon as i saw that and i saw that uh, in the combat it was kind of uh and also yeah the second the punchline the second punchline was the camera is just way too fucking close it's uh -huh. it's like it's like sitting on his back and i'm like if the camera was a little bit farther away i could see the incoming attacks um yeah you can so, be more strategic. Yeah, yeah. So basically, just because of those, I was like, I'm out. But it was very quick. It was like two uh, before two hours hit. I was like, I uh, basically some people might like it. I'm, I'm I'm just not willing to put the time right now. I might pick it up again at some point, maybe if they fix that. Uh, but I, as they said, it's a it's a complete package. I'm not sure if they're gonna touch. Yeah, I, th I think it's fair to skip it then. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're gonna touch the the, the systems, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, I was going to touch on a certain subject, but we're going to leave it because we're running a little low on time. Let's move on to Pathless. It's an 80 critic average, 89 recommended. Crazy. This game, like my recommendation is just buy it. Like I, I, I wouldn't even go if you like Warframe and if you like Journey. <laughs> There's no caveats. It's yeah, just good. Just, just, it's just good. Like, there's, uh, if you, uh, basically, I'm just going to say, if you like fluid movement in games, uh -huh. just buy it. Like, it's let, that Let me, uh, because I've watched uh, Rejaku, our mutual friend from yes, ACG. Yeah. I've watched him play, you know, quite a bit. I haven't played myself. Okay. But what killed me was watching him, because you have to shoot these things to mm -hmm. keep yes. sprinting, right? Yes. That's how you keep your movement speed. Yes. Uh, I don't know if he was like just not hitting, but he was constantly going from sprint to slow movement. Huh. I think that he, he was just not using the game systems properly, okay. maybe. Uh, but that to me was like, oh, like killing my soul. Huh. You know, like going from the sprint, which yes. felt great, to like the the drag of the normal slow. Okay. Run. That's weird. That's weird because honestly, I could probably run across the entire map and not stop once. Um, yeah. So there, there, there is a, so there. Are, when you are in this like fast movement animation, there's like four different states you can be in. So you are sprinting, jumping, sliding, and there's also vaulting in the air. Mm. Um, there's also flying, but flying is already getting uh kind of uh, uh basically so you're of, supposed the... to always be in motion right basically like with this well no system. um so sometimes the puzzles require you to just stop think about it and you know like basically play a game rather than just uh, run through a level right right um, i saw some of those too yeah so <sighs> there's rarely a game where i where i what i like the movement so much that i just run around for two hours just to run around. I, th I think uh, more and more I've found that's the mark of a good game. And right. I think back to like Spider-Man. I think back to I was gonna say that. Valhalla. We, yeah. It's just like, dude, I'm running around. Like it's, yeah. it's fucking It's great. awesome. It's fu yeah. I fucking love it. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm just running around in the game. Yeah. Um, so last game that I played that made me feel that way was um, Spider-Man. Right. I could swing <laughs> for literally... I wouldn't. I, I'm not even lying to you. I have about 20 hours just swinging in the game, um, and it was it was that fun. And basically, this is the same feeling that I got. Uh, so basically, for for you guys that don't know, it's a um, 
basically it's a surprise but it's an unsurprising gem from these developers because they have a it's they came in such a in such a way that the publisher the developer and also the the, the person who made the music the composer they just fit together to make this game and it's basically yeah. like an uh, it's kind of like an exploration game um like abzu or journey but with mixed boss battles and puzzles um what's very interesting about it that you are never truly safe um there's a storm going around the island where you where you are and it can always come like literally unexpected you can outrun it if you're good at the at the movement systems um but it's 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 not easy and when you get caught you get caught in a it's not a boss battle but you get caught in an encounter that you have to escape from and then once you finish a certain region then comes the big boss battle because you have um lowered the influence of the boss so much that you, you can actually damage it and you can actually fight it very interesting very very cool game you're gonna be are you, are you are you interested did they make you interested you know what you you have nice <laughs> A lot, a lot of people are raving about the game, and I don't know the way you talk about it. Kind of connects with some yeah. of the games that I've liked a lot in the past. So, yeah, uh, where where is this? Uh, is this epic? epic? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, hopefully, it's not going to be another BPM. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. That's okay. I it wasn't for me, but it yeah. was. You know, it was a cool idea for sure. Yeah, yeah. BPM is a game I liked, but if you guys didn't know, Johnny refunded. But uh, yeah, <laughs> next one, next one, Marvel Spider-Man of Miles Morales, 85 critic average and 93 critics recommending. Definitely. I think this is a must buy if you're getting a PS5. Like, what are you going to play if you're, not, if you're not playing this? Right. Nothing. Well, there's 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 Demon Souls if you want to if you want to just tear out your tear, tear out your eyes. Out of the anger no, of, of it's not of... that bad. <laughs> I'm just not a big fan of the the Dark Souls games. No, that's fair. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're very particular. Yes, I mean a lot of people like them, but I just like as much as some people like them, I hate them <laughs> to my core. <laughs> In the opposite direction. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, any any thoughts on Miles Morales? No, it looks good. What I yeah. I was surprised with the performance mode because that again, this was just me watching Rajako play, so it I, I don't have direct experience. Mm -hmm. But when he turned on the performance mode, mm -hmm. I was like, "Yeah, wow, this is how yep. the game is meant to be played." Because swinging around the city in 60? 60 FPS, oh, fucking love. hell, that's oh, woo, that's, that's a beautiful some, face. That's some eye porn right there. <laughs> Um, and yeah, and basically moving on, Marvel Spider-Man Remastered. So uh, basically it was remastered to PS5. It's just a completely separate release. Um, from, what I'm, from what I'm seeing, it, has, it doesn't have an open critic score. Well, obviously we can look at the open critic score of the last one, which was like 90-something. But uh, it's, it's a great game. But from what the reviews of the remastered, it basically it's worth the replay. Um, they didn't touch any of the faults, like, you know, the, the repetitive uh, side missions and stuff like that. But it did get some king, uh, it did, did get some tweaks. Uh -huh. And when you're buying this version, you're buying this version plus the, uh, the City That Never Sleeps DLC. So it's kind of cool. like a game of the year, you can say, edition. Yeah, like ultimate edition. Pretty much. So... Honestly, I finished. I and I hundred percented uh, Spider Man, but I'll be buying it. <laughs> nice. I, and I will, but I will be buying it again because I just want to replay it on the PS Five. That's just awesome, dude! Swinging sixty yeah. frames, dude. Woo! AC Valhalla, uh, eighty four critic average and ninety one recommending the game. But let's let, let's keep our thoughts to the to the to to after this. Um, actually, no, I'm dumb. Let's talk about this now. <laughs> okay, let's hit it. So uh, let me ask you very quickly: How are you playing the game? Basically, I'm I'm talking about difficulty. Mm -hmm. What skills you're t you're focusing on? What is your favorite combo with the weapon and sh and well with the weapons? Yeah. And uh, what kind of uh, uh, set are you rocking at the moment? Cool. So I'm doing the I forget the name. It's the hard difficulty. So it's it's not the hardest. Well, the hardest. It's okay. just the one above normal, and I've been finding that fine for now i've been using axis overall because i found it's like a, a pretty viking 
mm -hmm. weapon. Mm -hmm. In Odyssey, I, I I was using like a javelin, so like a pokey pokey style, right? <laughs> Pokemon. And I I wanted something very different, and the axe is quite different. Uh, I'm also I want to try hammers, but I haven't found <sighs> any yet. Um, we'll, we'll get into the gear stuff because you Dude. know I haven't found a lot of gear, mm -hmm. but um, aside from that. I just I had like a good uh, gear set mm -hmm. from the uh, from the UPay Plus thing, okay. UPay Plus service. I'm just using that. A lot of times I actually remove my armor visually, mm -hmm. so you know you can turn off parts yes, of your armor. Yes, I like cool. like you know bare chest Viking, mm -hmm. um, um, with like sometimes a bare head. And, so the berserker, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you know a great axe in one hand mm -hmm. and uh, a shield in the other because I found. Again, it just fits the setting. I'm not a big shield person from other games. Okay. In Souls and stuff, I typically don't use shields. Yes. But here, I just find it fits very, yes. very nicely. Yeah. Uh, and I love the. So I think maybe it was you actually uh -huh. that told me like the the dual wielding heavy weapons yes. trait or yes. skill. It's very cool because I very can cool. have the great axe and mm -hmm. the shield, mm -hmm. and I have great range on yeah. it and. Uh, a lot of great moves for a very strong mm -hmm. weapon. Mm -hmm. But then aside, when it comes to skills, I have a mix of stealth and melee. Mm -hmm. So the ones I use most are the the push onto a wall, which I think you also mentioned. It's very strong. Mm -hmm. the you Russian run. Bash, uh, so it? so the one that you slam people into walls, or you knock them over yeah. and you smash them in the face. So that's the upgraded version, isn't it? No, it's Where a completely different one. You slam them against the wall, and then you finish them so yeah so when you finish them that's the upgraded version yes but there's also a different skill that you run into okay. them and you knock them over and you start hitting them in the face that's the, that's oh, i don't have problem. that one okay, okay cool. that sounds fun though yeah no, but <laughs> the, the pushing and then the the jump i find very good because yes. it, it creates an opening so for very oh, strong enemies yeah. that are just blocking everything yeah. you jump on them you get a mm -hmm. couple of free hits mm -hmm. uh, and then outside of that just parrying a lot mm -hmm. And using cool. free camera, so I, I rarely ever lock on. Lock on. Okay, yeah. cool, 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 cool. Um, yeah, for, so for myself, I do play on the hardest difficulty on <laughs> on both the combat and the stealth uh, because they actually give you a choice on the stealth as well. Um, there's like the master assassin difficulty. Right. Um, how, how, do you, how do you find that, I that difficulty I overall? I don't stealth. Listen, <laughs> I fucking yeah. I, I run in. I'm a Viking, okay? Right. I'm not here to you know to to like sneak around some bushes, whistle whistle at people, you know. Some <laughs> yeah, some yeah. some dude is walking around like. <laughs> 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 that's uh, you know you uh you, you basically spit at him, right? Um. Yeah. So yeah, that's that, that's what I'm doing. Um. I'm mostly focusing on wolf and bear. Mm. So basically, the when we're talking about skills. Um, so it's basically the ranged, the quick melee, and the and the heavy melee, and okay. I do use the the double the dual wield the heavy dual wield. Um, and which weapons do you use? I'm using a spear, and uh and a and a shield. Honestly, nice. you know what? I'm so salty that they didn't give us shields in the Odyssey that I had to run this combo right. Like it's so iconic to Greece. And their hoplites, like their is it called hoplites? Hoplites? The their, their, hoplites. Their hoplites. Yes. Yeah. The the they, idea that you have basically use your shield for support, and so you, you have, have your yeah. your and lance on top. And you have a lance, and you, you know they do jabs, and they can block us at the same time. Yeah. Um. That me being salty at the the previous game made me want to pick this up, and actually mm -hmm. it's really good because it gives you quite a lot of range. Like the yeah. spear is uh, easily. Oh yeah. Actually no, sorry, I'm I'm lying to you. Spear is not the highest range. The birdish is the highest range uh, weapon. You you can have a birdish that you can swing around and he does like a swing, oh. literally from the. So basically, yeah, birdish is the highest yes. range, and then the spear is the second highest uh, range. But I've started using that. But before that, I was using just broken. Just I felt dirty using the blacksmith hammer, the only hammer in the game that you can get quite early. There's also one more later that I'm not going to spoil. Okay, I might have to look up how to get that. I haven't gotten any hammers Can yet. I tell you where it is? Yeah. It's in London. I've been to London? Dude, I've conquered 
They're my allies. Dude. Where's my hammer, bitch? Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, basically okay. it's one I'll, of the it's it one of the wealths in in okay. London that uh, that you yeah. have to do. Um, but it's busted. It's broken. It's absolutely. But I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you experience okay. it. Okay. I'll, because... I'll experiment with it because mm -hmm. it looks like it goes through guard because people yeah. with hammers go through my guard. So yeah. I imagine it would. The same. Um, so basically, critical hits will knock people yeah. on the ground, and then you can you can stomp on them. One quick thing, because you mentioned before, like yeah. there are certain things in melee games when when you see it, it's, it puts you off. Mm -hmm. There is one in this game for okay. me, which is um, the enemies have what's called hyper armor in the souls world which means when they do an attack mm -hmm. you don't actually interrupt the animation by attacking okay. them first okay. right so if someone is about to attack <clears throat> you in a souls game a lot of times you can attack them first mm -hmm. if you have a faster animation mm -hmm. and you interrupt that attack mm -hmm. yeah so that like that changes the way you play the game so, in here mm -hmm. they they take a mace to the face they're still going to do the attack Mm -hmm. which looks absolutely you know almost like immersion breaking because i just hit them with a massive axe and yet they're able to like finish their animation without any problems mm -hmm. so that that's one thing that annoys me but yeah so yes i definitely do agree that this happens uh but so i noticed that this happens for so you cannot change their tra you can say trajectory of their attack when they're doing the yellow or the red attack, but when they're doing just the regular, you can. So but I have found maybe it depends yeah. on the weapon. Usually, right? so yeah. You, usually the regular is so fast that it's so hard to hit him before he hits you that it's almost it's impossible. Not, because a lot of times they telegraph it. They're like, I'm going to hit you with this sword. <laughs> I don't know if maybe because I played a lot of Souls games, uh -huh. I see it a mile away. Maybe, you, maybe you know so. what I mean? Like maybe so. I see the animation from the beginning, so mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm just gonna interrupt you, but no. <laughs> yeah. So the 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 rating, the 84, I believe I said, yeah, 84 yeah. is very Solid. very in line with what I with what I'm thinking about the game. Um, I'm really liking it. Um, what's what really leaves the bad taste in my mouth is the microtransactions. Um, if that wasn't there, basically, if you guys don't know, on, in AC Valhalla, if you buy, um, let's say a set, you know, like like a combo pack, I, I think it's called a pack. Let's say you buy a a Valkyria pack, like myself, right? Um, yeah. I felt so dirty buying that that I didn't even use it for most of my playthrough right at the moment because it made me so powerful. Um, because when you buy it, you get a mythical, uh, grade gear straight away, which is the highest, right. highest. Grade. We'll talk about the gear in a second, but it's the highest grade gear. Um, the stats are in line with what you have currently, but, um, uh, what's, what, what's the worst is that I think the, the, the best sets, uh, well, basically the best, um, passive, you can say, um, bonuses behind sets are basically the paid ones. Um, so basically the Valkyria set if you do a Valkyria jump or the leap of, Valky of Valkyries I think it's called the uh, ability for some time after you get more armor more speed and more attack so like literally what I do is I, I, ha I have three slots for, for my adrenaline I jump around like a crazy person and then I just yes. and then I hit once and, 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 I just, and yeah I just kill people um so quickly, I took that off because I felt dirty for for wearing it, and I, and I just wore, wore rocked the berserker back. So basically, that's what really leaves the bad uh, bad taste in my mouth. What about yourself, dude? So for me, it's just very easy to avoid all of that because you yeah. actually have to enter the store, right? So there's like, and I think this is you know kudos to them because a lot of games it's in your face, put you in the, the face, yeah, the shop. Uh, but in in here, you know, there's admittedly it's a big button it says go to store at the top right right it, but you have to go there mm -hmm. to see any for sale items i will say as you said you know i got a set from the uh you play mm -hmm. uh because it, it gives you the ultimate edition right so you have like a set the berserk uh, one, and yeah. i did i did feel 
cheap. I don't know if it was the Berserker, but I did feel a bit cheap because yeah. the other stuff that I had access to was really bad yeah. in comparison. Yeah. So at the same time, because I was playing at a higher difficulty, it, you know, it, it felt fine. Yeah. And okay, also cool. just in general, uh, for me, like being hit already feels like a, like a, de a defeat in some way. Like yes. the way I play is I like to, to play it really clean. So mm -hmm. I avoid getting hit. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really matter what armor I'm wearing. Mm -hmm. Uh, what really matters, as you said, is some of the passive bonuses. Yes. And, you know, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see what you mean. Um, so just to hit, just to hit this, a, a few nails on the head, there's a lot in the game. The game is massive, absolutely massive. I think the story <laughs> takes something like 65 hours, which is absolutely <laughs> insane when you think about it. I mean, uh, I'm not talking about just the isolated story. By the way, kudos to them that they didn't they didn't uh, gate any of the progress behind oh, yeah. some uh, some grind anymore. Mm. Um, so th does great it change. Yeah, very good. Does it feel blurry to you, or do you feel? Dude, the it does not. In fact, I know exactly. I find myself like, where are the side quests? I'm actually willing to do a couple. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, I'm, I don't know. It, it feels like it's all main story. Yeah, honestly. So like um. In the way that even the side quests feel like real quests, yeah, with interesting characters and like, yo, there's like a quick, a cool, quick backstory, and a lot of times the side quests have like a different theme. Mm -hmm. So some of them maybe they're they're a bit more like on the fantastical side, uh, or maybe it's like an a, a legend one. You know, mm -hmm. another one is maybe like a a a, a mushroom trip, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it's almost like small yeah con self-contained so the side quests if you guys didn't know the side quests are still there um but there's much less like uh, we're talking main story and we're talking four other sites it's like yeah. like site you can and say threads you can progress without like any want, yeah. level gating yeah. right yeah yeah, yeah. um the rest of the stuff is called mysteries um right. so the mysteries are basically like very short I would say below five minute stories that tell you something about the world. And or small puzzles. Small can... puzzles, yeah. Very, it's very rarely actually combat. Uh, mm. Mostly it will be something like flighting or um, it will be something like talking to somebody or I will be do, like uh, breaking into somebody's house. Um, I know that I, so one mystery that I had was um, a, cup, a Viking couple. Uh, had a hard time getting it on and they uh, they had to feel like they're raiding again so I had to burn their house to to make them climax if wow. you know what I mean that's some so, hardcore gameplay or, no, or role play right that's now. some that's some that's some <laughs> awesome stuff basically their uh, their roof was was burning and they were you know they were doing their, their business so yeah very very cool um, just kind of come back to uh, combat for a second I really enjoy the combat minus some of the bugs that uh, mm. we are experiencing. Um, I hate that when I'm stomping somebody and literally um, somebody steps just in front of me, it, it he blocks my stomp. When I was already yes. getting gonna stomp somebody. There's some wonky stuff happening sometimes. Um, and also one thing I wanna do mention is that bosses in particular have really tight timings on the parable attacks. Um, it's crazy because when I fought, when I and that's basically how, in my opinion, they scale the the difficulty of the bosses. Because if they had just the projected attacks like the normal enemies, it would be just piss easy. But yeah. sometimes it's just so hard because uh, there was one boss in particular, one of the um, daughters of Lyrian, she stabbed so quickly. I had no time to hit no my, reaction time. yeah to hit my uh, by the way i'm using like the the puddles on the back of my controller oh um no early reaction to hit the puddle to uh to parry her attack so basically every time she did just a regular attack which is which should be very parryable and should be like her weak spot i had to dodge before i was expecting her to do it because there was no i, I couldn't fucking do it huh um so the, bo the bosses in particular have very very weird party timings like sometimes the um, the notification appears that he's going to do a, a yellow attack 
and sometimes he do he does it straight away and sometimes he does a big fucking wind up and you know he freaking just like winds <laughs> up twice and then yeah. you have to parry it so i feel like that's how they scale the bosses you really have to learn them but once you learn them they 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 don't become like piss easy but they just become doable in my yeah. opinion what's your what's your take on that uh, well, I haven't gotten as far as you. So far, it's been okay. I have found that a lot of the times it hinges around parrying, which is since Sekiro, basically every one of these games mm-hmm. seems to uh, prize parrying mm-hmm. over other strategies, which annoys me a little bit mm-hmm. because games before Sekiro offered you many options, right? You could do the parrying, you could do dodging, you could do... Uh, sprinting around Mm -hmm. so you had many viable options Mm -hmm. and many bosses felt like if you're not parrying you're doing it wrong yeah so in that way it felt a little bit like you know uh annoying yeah but just like sekiro if you give in and you play their game it feels good it's Mm -hmm. you know it's fun it's definitely fun it but yeah it's just that um it, it does force you to adopt that play it style. It does. It does. Uh, I would say it does until you uh, you unlock an ability. Uh, sorry, a skill that allows you to slow time uh, when you dodge. When you do a perfect no, I dodge. I have that as well. I have oh, that as well now. And, and yeah. you're saying that doesn't really affect it? For some stuff, yes. It the helps. problem is you can't dodge everything because you don't actually have full iframes so Mm -hmm. invincibility Mm -hmm. so a lot of attacks have like a cone a wide cone if you dodge a lot of times you still get hit yes um so it's not super reliable Mm -hmm. as a replacement i see what you mean i see what you mean yeah um there's some cool abilities dude um yeah i gotta uh, find some more uh so yeah there's the abilities which you find from uh, sorry that you find from um the actual books of knowledge uh but there's also the skills i was actually i was actually talking about the skills um there's like the missile reversal not sure if you saw that that you can i don't have that one yet um you can basically somebody shooting at you or throwing a spear or something you can throw it midair and shoot it back at them um very cool and i'm using that you can also pick up a weapon from the battlefield and just throw at somebody break their shields and stuff like that very very cool so there's breaking shields is a dope dope mechanic yeah yeah (laughs) very very dope you can only uh, break the the lower tier ones but it's still very very cool yeah um but yeah as as you said previously i don't really feel the grind i don't um yeah even though it's a long game I've already spent 35 hours in the game. Like in any other game, I would feel like I'll, I'll be like, fuck, I gotta do I this shit agree. again. You know? It feels great to jump in it, every time. It just feels great. And I'm actually feeling like I want to play some Mo right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, are you playing uh, Dude or do that? I'm Iver? playing the Animus Chooses. Okay. So the it middle. switches between the two? Honestly, the thirty-five hours I've played, it's just just been the the the, the, female. the female. So, <laughs> let me ask you this: When it comes to like romance, romance opportunities, yeah. yes, how have you felt? Have you had many? Has it been One. mostly dudes, mostly women? I've had, tw- I had three options. Okay. For for uh, so I had two options for one t- one night one night stands. Okay. I said no because I'm a clean I'm a clean girl. Wow. And okay. then, classic gal. Yes. And <laughs> then there was one which is I'm not gonna spoil. It's a okay. it's, a, it's actually a side quest. I'm not sure maybe you've done it. It's a side quest that you do with a certain NPC and you become actually they become like your boyfriend girlfriend. I'm not gonna spoil and say oh, mm-hmm. she, she, I, I think I know who it is, but yes. we'll, we'll leave it for later. And it's interesting fact that every time you see them after, you can kiss them or you can do or you can woohoo them. Mm. Um but you can also break up with them. Which is very right. interesting. So basically you break one and you can like move on to another. But I haven't found any other ones yet. So I've only what about yourself? Have you found many romantic I have one one like you know, almost like housewife, you know, when I come back, right, I, I can kiss her and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I have another affair, uh, which is like actually a main character that something developed there. Oh. And I don't want to say like, who. interesting. Yeah. Interesting. 
and it's complicated somehow they don't know it's complicated very <laughs> but somehow they don't know about each other and it's it's all going oh. well oh. so far that's awkward it <laughs> it will be fine oh it'll be fine okay <laughs> that's what they all say yeah <laughs> famous last words <laughs> um Let's for a second talk about the gear because we we have mentioned we have teased it thirty fucking times during this the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, um, I just I have not <clears throat> found weapons. I have the same like six or seven weapons. Wow. Since the last twenty hours. So I'm actually in the, the last twenty hours. I don't think I've found. Maybe I've found one new weapon to give wow. you an idea. How many hours? Sorry. Last maybe in the last twenty hours, I've found one or two tops. That's crazy as fuck. Weapons. Man. That's crazy. Um, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Dude. I feel like I've I've I'm been I've been the total opposite. Like I I now get pissed because I don't find any weapons anymore, and I found so many at the beginning, like shields, spears, halberds, fucking swords and stuff like that. Um, How'd you find swords? I. I, I need to look this up because it could one, be like some yeah. stuff I'm not doing. There's one know. you can buy from the merchant. It's very okay. good. You you can buy I that. Checked that. Uh, by the way, it's shit, but every merchant's the same. Sorry. Um, oh. Yeah. yeah. So you you can go to any merchant and it's gonna have the sword. There's like a set amount of items you can buy from the merchant. Uh huh. Um, there's also one more sword that I found. But yeah, basically I found all the gear. But now when I go to raid something and I don't find gear, I'm like fuck. I want more gear, dude it's i find so basically if you guys didn't know the gear now is is unique you can only find one of every weapon in the game um some people are getting like bugs they're getting like duplicates but it's not supposed to happen um whereas in the previous assassin's creeds uh, our origins and odyssey you would get multiple multiple copies dozens dozens you'd be like fucking you know sorting them Sw by swimming in gear right swimming in gear you'll be so sorting uh, by by size or whatever you know this one's yeah. m but the, the other one's l you know <laughs> i'm the l one right here <laughs> but yeah basically here you find one of each and if you like it if you try it out and you like it you can upgrade it and i think it has like four different um tiers, tiers. and yeah. then as you as you upgrade you get more slots to um to improve the gear so basically when you improve it you improve their stats they're just base stats uh, but what's cool every single piece of gear has its own power it has its own like secret well not secret but it's very Modifier. passive kind yeah. of like a passive bonus right as, as we talked about i talked about before so the spear that i'm using now increases my critical hit chance uh when i'm surrounded by three or more enemies cool so uh, and and basically, I have some cool stuff that when I hit people with a critical, they light up on fire. Yeah, I have that too. It's great. Right, and then when they light up on fire and they die, they they leave like a uh, right. like a body yeah, ablaze. Yeah, so you, you got some some synergy synergy going, between, right? Yeah, between all the different things. So yeah, so basically, how how do you feel about the gear? I wish there was more. Um, Again, there I is. don't know if I'm doing something. <laughs> I, I need to look into it, honestly, because my experience has been I equipped what I have now and I haven't changed it for the last 20-ish mm -hmm. hours of gameplay. I see what you so mean. So to me, it's like... That must feel pretty I, bad. I want more of that. Yes. Um, and, you know, I'm sure I'm going to run into it. Yeah. Like Eventually. now more. Uh, yeah, like soon, probably. Um, just for some reason haven't. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, but yeah, so far I like it, man. I like that you can almost choose any weapon. So even if you have like a basic bitch axe, let's you say you love that axe, right? Yeah. You can make it better. Yeah. You can go nuts, uh, improve it. You improve the, the rarity, mm -hmm. like the tier. Uh, you put some gems in there, mm -hmm. right? And all of a sudden it's good. So I do like that. Mm -hmm. You pick one where you like the moveset, mm -hmm. you like the modifier it has, mm -hmm. and then you can go gung-ho on that. Yeah. Very very cool, very very cool. I I I also like it myself. Um, one thing I would say is that I'm not really digging the rune system. It's very like you just slap some stats on top of a on top it's of. It's just gear. like a bit of extra stats. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm, not I'm, very inspiring. It's not. Yeah, it's not all inspiring. Uh, it's just basically it doesn't really even change much. It's like three. I think the 
rune of attack is 3.2 attack where your weapon has like my weapon currently has like 80 something attack so it's yeah, it's, it's literally like literally, one or two more points yeah, one more one or two percent more damage which is quite minuscule so i'm not really digging that but besides that i really do like the the system uh do you like it overall you know you than... know what i think it is dude i think it's like a late game system so when okay. you get to late game your weapon stopped scaling because you've let's you've say you've leveled it, it up right maximum, yeah. but what you can do is if you get some kick-ass gems from from missions supposedly you can that's a way you can keep expanding your sure your weapons and because i think be it's true. percentage as well you know if your attack has has become very high at that point then you know like three percent all of a sudden maybe becomes 10 20 instead of one or two well, so the, that could be hmm. could be a thing the runes are actually well uh, uh, the attack runes uh, especially are flat they're, they're just flat they're flat are yeah, they the three point three point two okay. attack Th flat. there may be better runes might I don't be know. it might be so so maybe uh, we are still due to them i know that as you upgrade weapons you open up more slots and then when you upgrade yeah. it to the best to the best uh, uh you can say quality there's like a one like a uber rune yeah it's a it's a rhomboid it's shaped differently yeah, right it's a rhomboid yeah. rather than a circle so um, I've unlocked those. I'm not gonna spoil it. They do get better, but it's nothing. Uh, like okay, nothing earth crazy. Earth shattering. Um, uh, well, one one thing I would say is that there's not enough upgrade materials in the world. Yeah, definitely. Come. Uh, so basically, you haven't found that much too much gear, but there's quite a lot of gear that I want to get from the ground. So the the lowest level. Uh -huh. Some of the gear you find on higher level, so that's fine. But some of the gear you'll find on the lowest <sighs> rarity, lowest yeah. quality, and there isn't enough carbon ingots. That's basically what allows you to upgrade the gear. You can upgrade three carbon ingots for a weapon mm -hmm. and one per piece of armor. And there isn't enough. I've done all the raid and everything, and I've, I've, I'm pretty sure there's only 12 carbon ingots in the game. So you can't buy more? Carbon you can ingots? indeed so okay that's what i'm going that's what i'm going with this you can buy more they okay. cost 150 uh silver each which 150 silver is not is not cheap it's pricey uh, it's pricey yeah. as fuck uh, but you can buy some some silver with the with the transactions yeah of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but yeah basically that's that's something that i found that yes you can buy all the different um, upgrades. Um, mm -hmm. Silver eventually runs dry because you no longer do missions which give you 400 silver. Um, and later, I feel like that in the in the end game, it's going to be a grind fest. Uh, well, for people who get to, to the end game, right? Uh, it was going to yeah. be a grind fest of silver or you will just have to splash splash that, re that real sweet cash to uh, to get some silver. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Fair. Yeah, that's that, that, that's also what I was uh, where I was going with the microtransactions. Rating is fun, right? Rating. Yeah, man, it's dude, great. I like to burn dude, churches. I, I love the group battles, dude. <laughs> because in Odyssey, it was sure you had what what, what were they called? You had those like conquest group, battles. Conquest. It wasn't dynamic at all. Shit. It was almost Terrible. on rails, right? Yeah. Uh, it was it was visually cool. It was visually cool. But this yeah. is like. Dude, it's all happening in real time. Yes. These dudes are are hitting it, and it's yes. not perfect, mm -hmm. right? They're a bit dumb and stuff, but yeah. it's pretty great. Yes, because it feels like when you're raiding a fort, and you're like, "Yo, you gotta open the gates." So okay, you're fighting Bruh. dudes, you're helping your teammates, right? You revive awesome. people. You you climb over the wall. You people are going crazy oh he's climbed over the wall yeah right? they're trying open to like, the gate yeah and the, the floodgates and people come in it's pretty epic dude epic. and it's all like that it's not like odyssey where at times it happens it was, yeah it's a lot of it like this mm -hmm. which i think fits mm -hmm. really well if you if you've watched like the vikings show or yes. if you've seen anything about vikings that's you know how they did these like battles mm -hmm. it's all like group engagements yeah 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 so in the game you have uh two types of you can say um uh, kind of like these conquests you can say there's raiding which is more i would say down to earth 
you run into town, you burn some churches, you kill some peoples, and you, you grab the gear and you get the fuck out. And then there's also what Johnny was just talking about. Those are the, those are called the sieges. Yeah. Um, the sieges are basically improved conquest battles that are now two, three tiered battles. That, as you said, you, dude, the, what's the best thing? My first siege that I've done, I haven't killed a single person besides the final boss. Clean, clean as fuck. I just, <laughs> I just jumped over some walls. I, uh, you know, I sne I sneak, sneak like gates. like a bastard. Open some <laughs> gates, and that's cool that the games allow you to do that that the game yeah. is like this is an assassin's creed game you can actually walk over some ropes and you know whistle at some people uh-huh <laughs> yeah whistle at some dudes <laughs> and uh and you know and just kill the final boss and clean as hell and while while your dudes are still fighting at the first gate you know super cool awesome man. awesome uh, very very i very very much enjoyed that part when i was it was very very uh, satisfying settlement settlement is cool but myself i don't feel too much connection i'm not sure about yourself i don't feel much connection there, besides there the are longhouse. a lot of ex interchangeable buildings a lot of buildings are like add some bonus to to when you feast yes it's like pff, okay what the fuck ever um yeah whatever some are pretty cool um, and, and some mechanics don't feel too good. Like the, the fishing doesn't really feel great. I don't know about you. I don't see myself ever fishing. I fish, much. With, I fish with, with my spear. It's, it's way faster. I didn't know you could do that. That's it's way faster. That sounds way better. Yeah. So yeah, fishing is kind of shit. Honestly, guys, <laughs> uh, I, I, I wouldn't get uh, crazy hyped up about the settlement. I was hyped up about it because I thought it was kind it, of like, it's kind of cool. It's, it's like cool, a cool yes. hub to return to. But it, it's nothing crazy. I feel very connected to the Longhouse, the main building, because yeah. there's there's a lot happening there. But besides that, I feel like all of those, you could strip those away and you wouldn't really lose too much. You could. Go, I would agree. You could, I do love yeah. the little the little pets you can bring. Yes. You find different animals you can bring over and they become a part of the settlement. Mm -hmm. I, I do like that. Yes. Yes. You can also recruit some people. Uh, I'm not sure if you've done mm -hmm. uh, the yep. Bjorn and the bear. The quest with the bear and the bear? No, maybe maybe not. Maybe I think the, not. The polar bear. Okay, sorry. Maybe I just no, no, it's something. all good. <laughs> no, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, but you you you'll get that quest anyway. It's probably in your uh, log already. Um, and it it really says bear and the bear, so <laughs> not too much spoiled. Um, yeah, graphics, sound, dude, fucking soundtrack is fucking Ooh. out of this world. Even Carrick I love said it. it. Man. Carrick it, is like it hits hard. Carrick is crazy about the, the sound and the the and the, just the score itself, yeah. but it's awesome. When Absolutely some of those amazing. when some of those tracks hit, it's like you feel emotional, it. powerful, and you're like, "Fuck yeah!" I'm gonna say it. <laughs> you feel like a Viking. You feel like a Viking, man. That's yeah. it, man. That's it. The, it. Graphics look good. It it has some optimization issues on PC. I found, okay. uh, but now that I have the 3090, I'm just brute forcing that shit reason <laughs> reason um yeah how how has it been on 3090 uh, what, what's your what's your framing like so i play it at 60 because when i stream i want the frame rate of the Constant. stream to match exactly i haven't tried like how far i can push it uh okay. fps wise but it runs totally locked at 60 cool. and ultra high at 1440p 1440p so, cool. cool 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 um one thing that I want to mention that is not in the game is no level scaling, which I'm right. which I'm very you miss it? yes I do. You miss the level scale. I do, as in uh, not level gating, but level but scaling. scaling. Yeah. So when they would upscale the low level bitch enemies to your level, so they're actually. Mm becoming more powerful and they're becoming a challenge because as it stands right now when i run into leather sister shire it's like it's like god amongst men i run in and i one shot people like, i, I literally like one shot people because it feels like i've progressed like early on those dudes would be a challenge but yeah. now right now i'm like a, a a higher tier viking dude i can i can topple those dudes but then you with go a finger. you go over the river to a different yeah, Correct. because those dudes are worse. I don't know. It doesn't make total <laughs> sense. But to me, my internal yeah. narrative is yeah. consistent. I see okay? what you mean. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's not game breaking in, in, in any way, but... Uh... It, I could see, like, if you tackle things in a particular order where mm -hmm. you do, like, harder settlements first 
and then you go to like an easier one that you know that would break the immersion for me as you say mm -hmm. but i think because i've been doing like the easier shit first and then mm -hmm. moving up to to more powerful settlements it's been working out yeah so i recently came back i'm currently power level 170 something um oh, corona action <laughs> no i don't um yeah, so basically I'm currently 170, something like that, uh, power level. And I recently had to go back to an area which is 130. I'm just crushing noobs, dude. I don't know. Like, yeah, just a massacre. Like literally I was running in, hitting people with one hammer and then stomping. That's it. Hammer, stomp, hammer, stomp. To just, be fair, that would kill a man. I mean, probably. For, like for real. <laughs> yeah. Is, man, I, I want some more fun out of my game. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, so that's basically Assassin's Creed. I I would say pick it up if you really if you enjoyed the previous two, it's a definite buy. Yeah. If uh, if you didn't, I would say probably wait for a sale and then pick it up. Yeah, pick I think up. the the UPlay service thing is a good bet because yes. for twelve bucks, whatever it is yes. in your region, you get access to all the shit. Right, the you shit. can play Valhalla. For if you don't more. like Valhalla, try Legion. If you don't like yeah. Legion, Phoenix uh, is coming up. Immortals Phoenix right. Rising, yeah. Uh, Immortals Phoenix Rising, all the Ubisoft stuff. So, you know, I think it's great value. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And probably, that's probably going to be uh, us for today. Uh, we already right. run, run quite a lot. I had one more topic, but I'm not sure if you're, uh, if you're still up for it. Dude, hit me. If we, if we can hit it quickly, let's yeah, do dude, it. Yeah, dude, let's hit it. Immortals Phoenix Rising. All right. Preview. It's going to be what good. Do you got? Get it. That's it. <laughs> what what does it offer that's different or unique you've felt? So I feel like it's a good Breath of the Wild. I so a very very are, are you casually taking a shit on Breath of the Wild? Yes. <laughs> like literally, okay. I did not I did not enjoy Breath of the Wild. Dude, I have it I, on I didn't my Switch. Either. I have it as well. Dude, I played only a few hours. Virtual high five. Dude. It's not for me. <laughs> I'll give you a fist bump. <laughs> Got it, dude. I didn't. I didn't <sighs> like it. I I know that Reg didn't like it either. He like he he, he took. Oh, quite... he came back and played it. Now yes. he he likes it more. Okay, he but likes yeah, it more. It's, it, it's not for me. That's okay though. Yeah. You know, it's one. Of yeah, those. it's yeah. So basically, I just find it, it's going to be more compelling Breath of the Wild because it's going to be for me for myself. It's going to have a more compelling setting, um, a better combat, just straight up mm. better because it's like more dynamic, more abilities, uh, kind of you know more fantastic. I would say, um, it's basically the game makers of our AC Odyssey. They are doing what they wanted to do with the Odyssey straight away, um, what they wanted to make. And they basically came up with with the game, beautiful cartoony graphics. I would say, great voice work with uh, not the actual characters in the game, but the narrators, because the game is narrated oh. by Zeus and, and Prometheus, and these two have some really really nice banter going nice. on. Nice. Um, so and that's cool too. The mythology stuff. It's a bit like Hades. We talked about having the the backdrop of mm -hmm. the mythology and mm -hmm. the different gods, the banter yeah. and stuff. That's that's really cool. Yeah, and it's, it's also interesting because it's 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 sometimes it's serious, but sometimes it's like right lighthearted and funny, and you you, you yeah. just need that in that in that type of game. I feel like when yeah. it's when it's too serious, like Breath of the Wild was, it's like I just didn't feel the connection, dude. Like I I I don't mean to shit on Breath of the Wild because I I definitely see it as a good game. It just wasn't a game for me. Yeah. It, just, it, it was taking itself too seriously, in my opinion. But maybe maybe I'm wrong in saying that because you know obviously it has the backstory of the you know the Zelda games right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe the the motivation goes beyond like save the princess, but that's all I ever got mm -hmm. from it. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so another another open world from from Ubisoft you can say, uh, but with a twist again. Exploration is the name of the game of this one. A lot of puzzles, uh, very very Breath of the Wild esque. Um, where you go down to a, I think it's called like some fucking, I don't know, some vault of Tartarus or something. Insert generic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you go down, you solve a puzzle, you get some ability or some upgrade and you get it, which is, f I, I like these type of games. Okay. Get off. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's like, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's targeting that group of people, right? That yeah. enjoy. As long as it hey, doesn't, doesn't feel do like a, a grind. challenge, get a new piece of gear. Right. As long as it doesn't feel like a shitty grind, then I'm I'm yeah. I'm, I'm all for it. Um, RPG light, 
elements um, with, with like equipment. Uh, so the equipment, the, you get a very specific equipment. So your light attacks are with your sword, your heavies are with your axe. And you just get a different versions of those, like upgraded versions of the of that uh, of that sword and, and that axe. Uh, so that's kind of light, you can say, elements of, of RPG. Um, but there's a lot of uh, cosmetic uh, customization, and I think there's a hundred and eighty different cosmetic um, combination, like not the combinations, cool. but different sets, which is nuts. And you can see where I'm going with this microtransactions oh yeah so yeah, yeah. when you equip a bracer you see that in your character yes cool okay yeah. i like that very cool there's there's a lot of um there's a lot of um customization also with your like face and hair and voice so you can I, also I'm a, I'm a shallow bastard i like that kind right. of stuff man yeah i like Dude. that also <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna make i'm gonna make because phoenix i think originally is a she so i'm, I'm, I'm gonna make it a him I'm gonna make okay. it just like myself, like a beard. I'm actually growing, you know, like a like a like long hair. So I'm gonna be. Oh like yeah, are, are you gonna back. go for the ponytail? Yeah, on top? Like, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be doing that. Gonna be one of those guys. Yeah, gonna be one of <laughs> one of those Viking guys, you know. It's good. Um, so it's yeah, good. no level gating because there's no leveling pretty much in the game. So very very cool. Um, but what I wanted to touch on, uh, uh, lastly, and I want to get your like full hands on on this. Interesting season pass. So there are three expansions. The first one is the most basic. I'm not sure if you have heard anything about the season pass. Nope. Okay, so first one is the most basic. There's just more of the same. You're proving you can cut it in Olympus as Phoenix. And basically the gods are, are you basically, the DLC adds more of these, these challenge vaults that you're supposed to do, like nine of them or something like that. When you do them, the story progresses and the gods say you are worth of being in Olympus. Okay. Basic bitch DLC. Yep. Number two, it adds a new... So you're playing as a new character. And you are playing in Chinese and Oriental mythology. Oh. They are changing the world completely. Very cool. Right? So I was, I was like, dude, Ubisoft is going to milk that shit. They're going to make uh, different mythology per different game, right? So there's going to be Phoenix 2. It's going to be... Uh, huh. like like viking right uh -huh. phoenix 3 is going to be chinese but no it seems that with the second uh dlc they're going to chinese mythology is going to be a different character you'll be playing and then the third one the most interesting one is that it turns the game into an isometric brawler so so when you told me that i was like what interesting How does that even right work? <laughs> so they're making kind of a diablo like game out of phoenix rising basically they're going to be expanding uh -huh. the rpg elements to uh, to um to count the gear in a lot more so very very interesting stuff uh and that, that sold me on the season pass i didn't buy the game okay so i have the game pre-ordered because i'm definitely gonna be playing this okay. but I'm, I'm still holding off on the season pass i don't want to be like you know take my monies right um, right yeah let's see what's there but I'm, but I'm, that sounds promising, yeah. dude. Yeah, I'm curious of the just the full package. I, I'm gonna play the game regardless of the reviews. But if the reviews are shit, I'm probably not gonna get the season pass. If the if the reviews are good, then I'm probably gonna pull the trigger on the season pass when the first uh, first DLC comes out. Uh huh. Yeah, I love seeing DLC that actually changes the way the game plays. And <laughs> very interesting. We don't see that a lot. Listen, I'm. <sighs> I would love, to, I would love to love Ubisoft, but they've done this shit before. Um, they announced uh, some sort of, uh, I think they did this with Far Cry or something like that. They announced like a season mm. pass that was supposed to add, like you know, I think it was like zombies to one, and then uh, moon, some moon stuff to the to the uh, to to the second, yeah, and to the third. So I think it was, it was Far like... Cry. They they did something in Mars, and it was, it was absolutely yeah. fucking. It was bad tripe it was yes. disgustingly bad and so i'm hoping i'm hoping that it's going to be good but i'm not i'm not holding my breath yeah dude ubisoft is that lover that you really want to love but it but she keeps pushing you away and you know she's not good for you but she you know at times she's really good for you yeah and, so and it's then, like you're conflicted and then she comes back with herpes and stuff like that like what the fuck Okay, well, that just adds a little nice bow to it. 
but yeah that's gonna be it for today um johnny i appreciate you coming on dude, I, I appreciate you dude thanks so dude, much we've done like two hours it's flown by thank you man for having me dude, appreciate it it's been it's crazy um it's crazy to you know to watch you and to listen to you you know on like on your streams and basically on on Carrick's podcast and then have you on awesome thank you so much dude hopefully we can we can play some some games soon hell yeah i appreciate I'll, you man take care dude i would love that and yeah any any last words no stay fit stay boosted yeah guys ch check out johnny uh, again he he streams and he does uh, his his own music i think it's www.johnnyplays.live exactly that's that's your, that domain that's his website Ooh. you can find everything there it's a very cool website i think you've done it yourself yeah yep yeah check it out music check it out streaming um i don't stream i'm boosted i i I work out sometimes, so don't check me out. Check him out. <laughs> and yeah, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much for listening and stay awesome. Peace.